efficiente, je pense. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup pour toutes ces clarifications-là. Et euh, on a noté... Tu veux parler Allez. Euh, Excuse-moi, monsieur, monsieur le Président. Je pense qu'il y a des questions qui ont été euh, posées à l'Union africaine et nous devons apporter des clarifications. Effectivement, mon collègue euh, dossier de la CEA a déjà répondu pourquoi est-ce que nous avons euh, présenté deux rapports, je ne vais pas y revenir, pour dire que nous travaillons vraiment en étroite collaboration ensemble. Je voulais vraiment rassurer l'ensemble des participants que la Commission de l'Union africaine, la CEA et la BAD travaillent ensemble pour la production des statistiques en Afrique. Et, vous, et pour preuve, vous allez voir eh, les autres groupes de travail que chaque institution a préparé un rapport spécifique à ce qui concerne le groupe de travail qu'il a su le secrétariat. Le groupe de travail sur National Account est préparé par la CEA. Donc cela est bien structuré dans le reste de, 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 de rapport. C'est peut-être que lors des de, de, de follow-up des recommandations des réunions de session passées que, que nous avons séparé les présentations, mais nous travaillons vraiment main dans la main pour la production des statistiques en Afrique. En ce qui concerne la question de, 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 de la BAD sur l'Union africaine, je pense que eh, il a dit la BAD a produit ça, la BAD a produit ça. Je pense que c'est bien le langage qu'il faut peut-être pas dire dans ces genre de réunions, parce que nous pensons que nous devons travailler ensemble. Et si la balle produit un document, il faut que ce soit les trois organisations qui produisent ce document-là. Il faut que nous soyons associés à la production de ce document-là. Je pense que c'est ce, ce qui ressort de cette discussion. Il faut qu'on travaille de main en main ensemble pour que nous ne disions plus que la BAD a produit ce rapport, la CEI a produit ce rapport, mais les trois organisations ont produit un rapport ensemble. Je me rappelle bien pour la stratégie sur, globale sur la, la, la production des de statistiques agricoles. Nous allons voir des présentations qui viennent d'être faites. On a dit que c'est la BAD, la CEA et FEO. Alors que je me rappelle bien, l'Union africaine a produit conjointement ce rapport avec eux. Et je pense qu'il faut qu'on bannisse ce de rapport dans nos discours pour que ce soit vraiment les trois organisations qui ont travaillé ensemble pour la mise en œuvre de ce rapport. Et c'est pourquoi que j'ai invité notre collègue de CADEP. Et je l'ai dit toujours, on ne peut pas produire une stratégie globale sur la production des statistiques agricoles. Dans, dans l'air, il faut que ce soit basé sur le CADEP. Et cela est important, parce que la politique doit diriger la production des statistiques en Afrique. Et vous ne pouvez pas produire une stratégie globale aimée à l'écart CADEP, qui est la stratégie développée par les chefs d'État et de gouvernement. Et je pense que cette réunion va, eh, offre à nous une plateforme pour que les deux stratégies puissent converger ensemble, pour que nous puissions, la stratégie globale de production des statistiques agricoles, puisse répondre aux préoccupations de CADEP et, et le, le document que mon collègue vient de, de présenter. En ce qui concerne la question de notre collègue de de euh, l'école de formation. Effectivement, Pelé qui n'était pas dans la salle durant les autres sessions, et cette recommandation faite, elle vient de, du, du groupe Agros. Donc c'est Agros qui a proposé la, la mise en place d'un centre de formation. Et ça a été adopté par la chef d'État de gouvernement. Euh, je pense que euh, dans ces recommandations, on a dit aussi de pouvoir renforcer euh, les écoles existantes. Donc il faut qu'on continue, nous appelons d'ailleurs les partenaires à renforcer les écoles existantes afin qu'elles puissent vraiment produire, parce que l'école qu'on veut créer ne va pas produire la masse critique des statisticiens en Afrique, ça qui est de l'école nationale. Donc je pense que cette recommandation existe et que nous devons appeler les partenaires pour que cela soit fait en Afrique, pour que les écoles existantes puissent avoir les moyens nécessaires pour produire les statistiques, les statisticiens nécessaires pour, 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 pour la production des statistiques en Afrique. Donc voici ce que je voulais dire par rapport à ces questions qui lui étaient posées. Merci. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres réactions Très rapidement, s'il vous plaît. Just, just a final point. Uh, the point about the agricultural statistics, that's because it's the theme of this meeting. It doesn't mean that it's getting dominant, but the, the meeting's theme is on agricultural statistics. That's why there seems to be a lot of agricultural statistics on this. But for future work, any adjustments you want to make or measures is welcome. But I'm just trying to explain that the theme of this meeting is on agricultural statistics. Merci beaucoup. Est-ce que tu veux aussi... Euh, hein? Just, just to, to complete, to complete uh, uh, what the colleague of the ECA said about uh, the theme of, of this meeting, which is on, on agriculture and food security, is also because uh, this year, 2014, is a year, the African Union here of agriculture and food security. So next year, it can be another team or it can target another sector. It's, uh, and next year, 
I, I, I have a confirmation from the colleague that it's on gender. So maybe you will overemphasize next year on gender. Merci beaucoup pour toutes ces clarifications-là, sachant que la coordination qui reste toujours posée est un processus de longue haleine et on sait très bien qu'il y a une coordination, mais on cherche toujours la perfection, on cherche toujours l'optimisation des ressources utilisées pour converger vers un objectif commun. Voilà donc, on va maintenant passer à la présentation d'Eurostat qui concerne l'appui de l'Union européenne au système statistique africain à travers un programme panafricain. Euh, je crois qu'on a, on a terminé, euh, M. Bali. Allez, une dernière... Allez. Mais très rapidement, s'il vous plaît. Très rapidement. Oui, allez. Très rapidement. Je pense que nous devons conclure ça avec une sorte kind de of guidance pour ceux qui vont être capturés dans les issues. We appreciate, because short of these reports, we wouldn't know that uh, we are regressing on the question of reporting and working together. We appreciate the reports. We encourage the Pan-African institutions to work together. We would like this committee here to take a resolution that has to be tabled to the three Pan-African leaders to monitor the three institutions so that they work together in particular because of the essences of data revolution and the like, we need a coherent statistical system at that highest level. This, I think, would capture the essence okay. of this discussion. Okay, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, cher ami, merci beaucoup. Donc, uh, on va, uh, okay, on va maintenant, on va maintenant uh, céder la parole à notre uh, Ami, donc le représentant de l'Union de Dorostat, pour nous présenter euh, l'appui de l'Union européenne au système statistique africain à travers un programme panafricain. Monsieur, vous avez euh, 10 minutes. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm very honored to, uh, to be here and be allowed to speak to you uh, about the new Pan-African program, which uh, the European Commission is planning to launch very soon. Um, I first want to uh, thank you, which I did, for this invitation. Second, I would like to give you my regards of the chief statistician of the European Union, Walter Rademacher, who, uh, in fact, was also thinking about joining for this meeting, but maybe somewhere next year or the year after, he will be happy to be here. I'm also very happy to uh, welcome um, many of the colleagues from the institutions all over the world, outside the African continent, for their presence here, because I think in this Pan-African program on statistics, not only the good cooperation between the countries of the African continent is important, but also the good cooperation between international organizations who are using African statistics, thinking about Young Tat who is there, thinking about ILO, thinking about Paris 21, for example, thinking about FAO, where the cooperation on this type of thing is, has to be very important. I will try to limit myself to 10 minutes. Uh, let me see if I can this get this working. Let me um, first give you the context, the context of work that we think is quite important and where you already are making quite a lot of progress. It's, it's amazing to see African statistics develop and it's amazing to also hear your discussions. Uh, it's amazing to hear you discussing still a lot about procedures, but in between the procedures I also hear a lot of things about the content of statistics and I think this is the development that is important. African Union integration, I think, is a very important tool which will help the further development of African statistics. What I see clearly and what also is, uh, I think, the impressive impression of this meeting is the growing continental approach to statistical production. No longer the regional components, but really continental African statistics. And I think the plea, as was just given by Pali, to really cooperate between these three main institutions is extremely important to make a further step. Great strides have been made uh, during the last years, the census and especially the census coverage of the African continent is quite impressive. The African Charter on Statistics is also a very good achievement. The coordinated strategy, the SHASHA, is, uh, I have been reading the document with, with 
with, uh, now, with a big surprise. I was really impressed uh, when I was reading it about the, the level of the deliverance there in uh, proposed deliverance in that paper. And of course, the decision on the new institute, which is quite important. The Institute on African Statistics. This is, I think, the main building block where the cooperation and all those initiatives have to come together. And I think also, looking around the table and listening to you, that there is a strong momentum for African statistics. The world is going into the data revolution. Evidence-based decision-making is a narrative which we all have heard. Big data is important. Now I think it's also the momentum for African statistics to jump on the train. So what is the European Union's interest in African Union's statistics? Uh, of course, there is the issue of support to uh, African Union integration. But there's also the joint Africa-EU strategy that includes, for example, issues about mobility and migration. We all know the problems that we see from refugees going from Africa to Europe. The human development issues, human development index, all the issues related to that. Private investments, which is a key for further development and for further GDP growth to get people interested in the African continent to invest. And I think we are, as I heard this morning, with 4 to 5% GDP growth on a very good way. But it needs further private investments in infrastructure, etc. And that is, again, the point. Infrastructure, not only for the normal infrastructure, roads, trainways, etc., etc., but also a very good infrastructure for statistics. Because statistics is, as I see it, a main infrastructure of modern societies. There are EU financial flows to Africa, public and private, which of course want to see what comes out of these investments. So there is a strong need, if I talk with my colleagues in Brussels or in other parts of the world, of seeing impact assessments and evaluations of what has been done with the support to Africa. For that reason, you also need to have good statistics, which allow you to evaluate. And of course, African Union statistics will be used all over uh, the world, and of course, as uh, Europe is a very important trade partner for Africa, it is of course that these are important for businesses, for governance, etc. So it's clear there is a very big interest from the European Union in good African statistics. So we have a very important stake in you having good statistics. What is the response on all these issues? One is the new Pan African instrument to support African Union integration. This is not peanuts. We are talking about eight to 900 billion, million, sorry, one billion, which is already quite a lot, euros. And in that, there's a small part, which is dedicated to pan-African statistical capacity building. Using all those instruments needs good statistical infrastructure. So part of it will be dedicated to set up, to support you, to facilitate you, to work together in having a continental approach to African statistics. And the key partners for the European Union is the African Union Com Commission Statistics Division. We see this as clearly the, the apex, the future apex of African statistics, with which we would like to work together and which we consider to be our partners. What is the rationale for Eurostat to be involved? Eurostat, I'm representing Eurostat. We are the statistical office of the European Commission. We have about eight or 900 uh, people working in the office in Luxembourg. We represent about 50,000 to 60,000 statisticians in Europe. We work together in making European harmonized statistics for the EU member states and the enlargement countries. So we have quite some experience with 28 member states, with four affiliated countries, with eight candidate countries, with a few countries in the neighborhood on making harmonized statistics taking care that the statistics are based on the same principles, produced in the same way, so that the outcomes are comparable and can be used for um, all kind of evidence-based decision-making. And we would like to share Eurostat's experience in bringing national statistical systems, about 50 what we have in Europe, together into one European statistical system. And in Eurostat and Luxembourg, we are working on that one European statistical system. We make the books with the 28 or 32 or 33 columns, each column representing a member state, and you can compare between the cells and you can be sure that the data are based on the same principles and are exactly comparable. And of course, there is a big opportunity to build on our lessons. We have been working on this since 63 years 
European Union. We have been building up statistics. Why for you losing time and why not listening to taking care, taking advantage of what we already have been inventing? Of course, within your own African context. That is very important because the context is quite different as how the European Union has developed. But I still think that there are many issues which we can at least tell to you so that you can avoid to fall in the same pitfalls. So which are the elements of the uh, EU experience? So we have a set of statistics in Europe which are extremely important for European governance. We have statistics, for example, based on gross national income, based on where the member states have to contribute to the European Union. We have statistics on agricultural subsidies based on how the member states will get subsidies on agricultural production. We have statistics on excessive debt and deficit, which allow us to keep the euro, the common uh, currency, under control. So we have a set of statistics which are used for direct policy making. Those statistics have to be extremely trustful, authoritative, and should not be questioned at all. We have other type of statistics which are more standard, and we have experimental statistics. So we consider quality as being very important, and we consider this quality from the perspective of fit for purpose. And the purpose is either direct policy making or the purpose is more academic type of research. Of course, we still have a lot of challenges, and we have gone through a lot of challenges. 28 statistical systems which are now in the European statistical system, and I have to add those of Norway, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Iceland, who are the EFTA countries. 32 statistical systems. We have to assure the quality on the European level. And of course, we have to take care that our statistics remain relevant. Beyond GDP will be extremely important. Quality of life will be important. Sustainable development, as we see, will be important. So this means also a, a, a regular, more or less continuous updating about what you really need to do. Your validity, your relevance is every time at stake again, each year, each month again, to be on the most modern way of making statistics. And that brings me to modernization, making the most modern, making use of the most modern tools for making statistics. Data revolution, big data, you have to be in the middle of it, because if you don't do that, you lose time and money in not adjusting your processes. And on this, of course, it's a big challenge, which we also could like to share with you. So the broad aims of the EU support for uh, African Union statistics is to improve the quality of your statistics. And quality means availability, reliability, among others, comparability, accuracy, timeliness, etc. So it's the wide scope of quality issues. And we would like to facilitate, to support the setting up of eff effective ways of working together. And I'm impressed by this meeting, but I still hear a lot of voices from where you come from, different, different directions where you're coming from. And this has to be brought together, and we are happy to facilitate this process of working into one African statistical system. And this also means build capacity uh, of both staff and of the institutions who are cooperating in this. And this means that we want to facilitate the transfer and uptake of good practices and common tools. So what are specific areas of support that we are thinking of? So the Shasha, as I was saying, I was quite impressed by this document. The specialist technical groups. I think we could really help the 14 groups, because I think there are 14 of those specialist technical groups in their development, in helping them to meet, helping them to think about standards and harmonization. And of course, it is also important to look to tools. And I'm quite happy that the, uh, the uh, Group of National Accounts has adopted the IRITES tool. The IRITES uh, tool to calculate national accounts, which is updated to the SNA 2008. And a further rollout of this would be very happy. And I'm very happy that we, a couple of years ago, decided to share the ownership of IRITES with countries who are using IRITES. And this is a very important development where we see a kind of common ownership. And this is also what we are doing in the European Union in statistics. We are developing more and more genetic tools that can be used by each member state, that can be used in the system. From 28 different systems, we are growing into one system because we use the same type of play and plug tools. 
data center at African Union level. We have in, Br in Luxembourg quite a large data center, and it's, it's, it's visited millions of times per day. And I think there, the communication channels, the websites, publications, etc., are quite important as a dissemination uh, element. And of course, this also leads to the support of simply setting up the African Union Institute for Statistics. What should be the main infrastructure there? What should be the qualities? In this, when I'm talking about maintenance and training for common statistical tools, we have a settled European statistics training program. I think there might be still a lot of occasions where we can work together on that. And I think this initiative on working together on training could be very helpful. Also looking, for example, to what we are setting up in the context of our European Master of Official Statistics, working together with universities and giving the universities a label that they can uh, apply in uh, teaching and in training uh, official statisticians. Um, if we talk about the methodology and production in rich domains, then it will be trade, national accounts, employment and migration, the sustainable development goals, where I think there is a very clear joint importance. And on those fields, I think we are really looking forward to work together uh, on developing those further, helping you on the standards, on the international standards from the UN to be applied in the African context. Maybe there are some others where other support could be given, for example, climate change or governance. There could be concrete projects on methodology harmonization, on data collection or improved dissemination. We still have to define the exact package of the, the, the program, but these elements could be taken in. In practice, what does it mean, uh, how we want to, to support? We would like to really help you in using common tools, which under underpin the harmonized approach. So what are the common tools that can be developed or are developed already in some parts of the system that can be shared by others? And thinking about some of them, of course, they have to be Afri Africa specific tools, but ERETES, Eurotrace, the package for trade statistics, they already have been chosen by the African Union as uh, important tools. We also have, of course, the system of peer reviews to check the governance and the good um, following the good uh, compliance to the fundamental principles of official statistics, thinking about the commitment of your governance, the methodologies that you're using, independency, dissemination, release calendars, etc. And how, again, I think the specialized technical groups will have a key role. They are the ones who, who carry the tools. They are the ones who carry the production methods. They are the ones where the work has to be harmonized. They are the ones where the dissemination has to be organized. So in my perspective, the main thing to work together with you will be in helping the 14, as it is at the moment, specialized technical groups. So what are the next timing of this whole program? The final stage of the agreement between uh, the African Union and the, or the uh, European Union and the member states, because I'm representing not only Eurostat but in effect also the European member states, was reached in November. We are going into the, the procurement of the services that we want to deliver during 2015. So what we need in 2015 is, uh, I think, a set of discussions, a set of deliberations on what exactly is needed and how this is needed. And therefore, we have this stakeholder meetings during 2015 to prepare the type of support that we would like to give via this uh, support budget that has become available. And this includes also discussions with the regional centers, the regional components. It's very important to talk with the regional elements of Africa. Not only with Africa as a whole, we have to talk with the African Union Statistical Institute, we have to talk with the ECA, we have to talk probably also with Afristat and some others to see what are the elements which we have to include. It's learning a bit by doing, and we hope that by the end of next year, we will be ready to start the real work in 2016. The real work will first take about two or three years, with a budget of around seven and a half to 10 million. And this is supplemented by another 10, 10 million, which is in the form of a grant going to the African Development Bank. So there is quite a lot of money which can help us in setting this uh, institute and setting the system in stone. Because a very important element, which I think I forgot to say until now, is the issue of sustainability. If something 
is created, if something is facilitated to be made, then the sustainability of the system is very important. It is not something for the next five years. No, it is a system for the next 60, 70, 80, 90 years, which we are building and which you are building and which we would like to help you to build. Thank you. Any further questions? I want to, uh, to <laughs> point to Kerry. Kerry, could you please stand up? Kerry Thompson is the, the leader of the project, and Kerry is also the here tomorrow and the day after to answer your questions if you have specific questions. Merci beaucoup pour cette présentation très intéressante. Vous avez dit dans votre exposé que vous voulez travailler avec nous. Nous aussi, on veut vraiment travailler avec vous. On veut renforcer cette coopération, cette, ce partenariat-là. Et donc, nous sommes vraiment partants dans ce sens-là. Vous avez bien mis en évidence donc, la coopération entre les différentes organisations internationales. Vous avez aussi cité quelques progrès réalisés en Afrique en matière de statistiques tels que euh, la charte africaine euh, essentiellement, euh, le Chaza, les, les big data et d'autres euh, projets. Euh, L'intérêt commun aussi entre l'Union européenne et l'Afrique euh, a été aussi mis en œuvre à travers la mobilité euh, et l'intégration, à travers l'index de développement, à travers l'infrastructure statistique. Euh, oui, euh, l'Union européenne, pour nous, est un partenaire privilégié euh, donc, euh, dans le domaine statistique et surtout, euh, Corostat donc, euh, capitalise une expérience euh, assez longue de bonnes pratiques en matière, en matière de statistique, euh, donc euh, âgé de 63 ans, si j'ose dire ça. Et donc, euh, certainement, on va tirer donc, avantage de cette... Euh, de ce progrès-là, et certainement vous avez cité quelques difficultés pour arriver finalement à tisser cette, ce, ce, ou bien à bâtir ce, cet institut-là. Euh, je crois qu'on aura nous aussi euh, l'occasion pour monter notre institut africain de statistique et ça va être vraiment un champ de coopération très élargi. Euh, voilà, donc vous avez aussi parlé donc, des étapes futures et notamment donc, euh, en 2015-2016 euh, et euh, l'enveloppe allouée à cette, euh, cette coopération-là. Merci beaucoup et euh, donc on va céder la parole à la salle pour euh, une éventuelle, euh, pour, pour des commentaires, pour des questions peut-être. Merci beaucoup. Voilà. Et on a euh, une commande dix minutes, hein, vraiment, on sent le, le temps presse. Je vais commencer peut-être par la gauche, mais... Euh, alors, qui va commencer hein? Code... <rire> Ok, j'arrive. Non, ok, la Côte d'Ivoire. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je, je voudrais vous emboîter le pas pour remercier, féliciter et le stade pour toutes ces bonnes nouvelles qu'on vient de nous donner. C'est vrai le temps de discuter de la réalisation de ces choses n'est pas, pas encore arrivé, mais je crois que nous avons la chance aussi en Afrique d'être en train de mettre sur pied leur institution homologue pour l'Afrique. Donc je pense que la porte d'entrée en Afrique pour tous ces appuis-là est bien dessinée. C'est notre institut de statistique dont le siège c'est ici même. Donc je pense que s'ils veulent vraiment qu'on capitalise et qu'on utilise à bon échéant leurs appuis, c'est la meilleure porte d'entrée, ça. C'est ce que je voulais dire tout simplement. Merci beaucoup, Ibrahima. Oui, oui, monsieur. Uh, th thanks, Chair. I, I think, uh, Peter, your, your presentation has really been spot on. And uh, the journey we have had with Eurostat, uh, Kerry, uh, with ourselves has been a, a very long journey uh, and now it's uh, bearing fruit. But there are downside risks and we need to watch those downside risks. If the three pan-African institutions... S'il vous plaît, il y a un problème de traduction. Oh, pardon? Ok, maintenant c'est bon. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Uh, the, the, the three pan-African institutions need to work even closer together in the face of resources, because resources can divide us. Poverty unites, treasure divides. 
and we have to make sure that we work together. And in that working together, uh, we also have to locate the Shasa, which is our instrument. And many of us as heads of statistics have not looked at the Shasa. We are focusing on our strategies internally in countries. What this process brings about is an external view of how we should perform as statistics agencies. And the Shasa is the instrument. In there, we have the young African statisticians that we have to pay attention to. Uh, yes, I was going to make two points, that uh, we need to focus on, on training. We need to focus on training institutions, in particular on leadership. And the AU through the Shasa has really to, have to be single-minded in driving that strategy for harmonization of statistics. And then, of course, adding new topics. But probably Peter knows the Shasa more than ourselves as heads of statistics. If we were to write an exam here, some of us will fail this money. We need to pay attention uh, to the Shasa. I thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. D'autres interventions, ou bien je passe le Nigeria? Oui, allez. Thank you. Um, my own is just to see uh, how EU can assist Africa even before the structures, the AU structures are proposing from 2016 to 2017 takes on effectively. How do you assist Africa with the little way you have been doing at the country levels for us to develop Africa industrial classification system? Uh, this issue is a very serious issue. I don't know how integration we are talking about will take place when we don't understand the dynamics of industrial in, in Africa. Take, for instance, the UN industrial region system was reversed in US and they adopted it for digit. The North America, inclusive of Canada, went from four digit to six digit. Given the peculiarities of North America, what is Africa doing? We are still in the UN four digit. But there are peculiarities that suggest that our digit may be up to eight because of the high level informer sector okay. that exists in Africa. So what we are saying is that it's a very serious issue. And uh, if we don't get these dynamics, I don't think that we will reach at the goal of integration. Okay. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. I think the last question is, um, is a very pertinent question, which I, with pleasure, uh, would like to answer. Um, the way we are working in the European Union is that we have a lot of working groups, task forces, etc. So take, for example, uh, the Voorburg Group, which is this global group on, on uh, industrial statistics. Take that as a, an example, and we have on the European level, in the European Union, we have a working group working on that, with, in principle, all the member states involved. Such a group is very important to s decide, to discuss, to decide on, for example, the classification that is most current in your continent. So it needs to sit together the people who are aware of this from your member states and exchange information best practices. The, the support that we think is quite important is to facilitate that those type of meetings of those special, specialized technical groups take place and move into the good direction with a strong mandate, with a good rule of procedure for such groups, with a strong focus on the deliverables. And facilitating those type of meetings will help member states, experts, 
to understand themselves better. Why do we need this fifth digit? Why do we need this special category of industries? Why do we need to go much deeper in the informal uh, sector to classify the works that we are doing? And this is a process which can take two, three years, and especially that process, that is what we want to support. Because by doing that, you establish knowledge how it's done in other countries of the continent. You go to a kind of common denominator, which could then be, and that's the European Union's policy, go into a standard, even into a regulation on European level, in your case, on African level. And with that, you have harmonized, and you also have created integration. The facilitation of those kind of projects will be the main part of the project. I hope I answered your question. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup pour ces clarifications là. Alors donc, euh, on va passer directement euh, à, aux résultats des groupes de travail. Euh, et je vais, ok, et je vais inviter donc euh, le représentant de, du Kenya pour présenter les résultats du groupe de technique spécialisé sur la gouvernance, la paix et la sécurité. Oui. Ok, ok. Il est pressé hein, au peloton. <rire> Vous avez cinq minutes. Et j'invite le représentant de, de Rwanda donc pour se préparer donc au prochain exposé. So, oh, thank you, Chair. I am going to present the report of the working group on governance, peace, security statistics. And this is one of the group uh, under Sasha. And uh, a lot of progress has been made in this area. Africa, we've made a lot of progress. And uh, we are called upon even uh, in the other countries outside Africa to make presentation on how we are computing and compiling these uh, statistics. And my purpose here is to just to give uh, an update of the progress that uh, we've made so far. This is one of uh, the active, very active groups as uh, will be demonstrated. So uh, the specialized uh, technical group one is uh, one of the 13 thematic groups under the strategy for the harmonization of statistics. And uh, we could uh, go to the document and uh, update ourselves on uh, all the other thematic groups, and, uh, but they will uh, also make presentation. And Kenya does provide the chair for this technical group. And the secretariat is normally provided by the Economic Affairs Department of uh, the African uh, Union. We normally get a lot of assistance from uh, the UNDP and other stakeholders. <coughs> and again, the coordination is normally there. We are under Sasha, the African Union, African Development Bank, and the EU UNECA, in collaboration with this committee of director generals, normally coordinate. And it's the responsibility of this committee to guide and approve the overall implementation of uh, the SASHA. S also, we could also note that uh, this work we do focus on assisting the national statistics offices under the guidelines of this committee to realize their comparative advantage in the collection of uh, governance, peace, security data. And uh, we do acknowledge that uh, sound and relevant official statistics is key 
to decision making and policy formulation, management and monitoring the various uh, development interventions. So without uh, sound and uh, relevant official statistics, again, we cannot be in a position uh, to make very informed decision policies and also monitor and evaluate. We also do recognize that uh, measuring progress on the commitments that have been made in the continent, the integration and the development to be undertaken by our readers, various international treaties and processes, we do require harmonized, and the key word here is harmonized statistics, and uh, that was the basis of coming up with the Sasha. And uh, this, it should be, the data should be built on sound foundations of shared standards, common instruments, capacity for implementation and analysis in the national statistics offices, and issues of capacity, issues of human resource, issues of human resource and financial resource are key if in we are to implement, if we are to collect, if we are to generate this kind of uh, statistics. And that is under the SASHA, it did provide uh, how the strategy or the strategic theme on how we should address challenges and obstacles that we do face. And uh, one of the key, therefore, in the essence is to provide quality statistics in Africa so that the statistics that is generated in our national statistical offices is of high quality. Then the whole issue of the coordination of the production of quality statistics, we do recognize that it is not only the NSOs that do provide or produce statistics, so the issue of coordination on how these statistics is to be produced is key. Then the issue of also building sustainable institutional capacity within the African statistics system and a promotion of the culture of quality decision making. So these are the key four strategic themes under the SASHA. And uh, this is even what, <coughs> this, uh, this is what guides even all uh, the specialized technical working group because the uh, specialized working group it is in the document you find that it is the first that is mentioned, there are 13. And uh, we are mandated to develop and uh, peruse an action plan. We have an action plan uh, which, need, which have addressed uh, the four strategic themes to be tackled. The membership, we have the membership. This is just a reminder of the membership. It's geographically from West Africa, we do have members from Benin to Senegal, Central Africa. We have Cameroon, Congo, and Gabon, East Africa, North America, and no, North Africa, sorry, and also Southern Africa, Malawi, Mozambique, and uh, South Africa. So those are the members of uh, the specialized working group on governance. We have had quite a number of meetings and workshops, and this is just an update. We've had all in all 12 meetings, and uh, we did have uh, the first meeting, which uh, we did have in Nairobi in the year 2012. Again, this was when we did design the roadmap. We set the working group, and uh, <coughs> the roadmap is what we have been following through so that we can ensure that uh, we do provide or produce comparable and reliable uh, statistics on governance, peace, and uh, security. We also did have a follow-up meeting in Dakar in September, the same year, 2012. And again, here we developed or we improved the issue of uh, the key purpose was to improve data collection, production, and dissemination. Again, it was to refine the guidelines on the indicators, coming up with the metadata and the questionnaires uh, to be used in the production of uh, the governance piece and security. And uh, in uh, November the same year in uh, Yomusukuru, that is Cote d'Ivoire, again, even this was presented during that meeting, 
we did review and approve the tools to be used by the, the group. We did acknowledge that uh, this committee is the one that normally that approves the tools to be used. Again, there was a budget and also there was a call for the interested NSOs who wants to implement uh, the instrument that had been developed by the specialized technical group. In the next year, that was in March of the 2013, we had in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire, a side event. And uh, again, this one was to raise awareness on the importance of uh, governance, peace, and security for decision makers. The Dakar also, we did have a meeting in March, again, to review and to validate uh, the collection instruments from administrative sources. And here, what I would maybe comment is that for our case in Kenya, we do collect this information through administrative uh, sources, well as in Kapvad, my brother there will also mention that they have also even undertaken household surveys in this area. So a lot of progress has been made. We also discussed the progress in uh, Johannesburg. And uh, the other meeting maybe which I could comment is a meeting that we also had in June in Cape Verde, where we did launch the result of the first pilot by Cape Verde using survey data. Then uh, the issue of uh, consolidation of the, GD of, uh, the GPS data collection methodology, again, using the Cape Verde case was discussed in the June meeting. Again, a very relevant meeting was also help, again, held in Cape Verde in October 2014, again, to discuss and design the terms of reference for the city group on uh, governance statistics. And uh, these TORs are going to be shared and uh, we want to present this in uh, the UN Statistical Commission meeting for approval. And uh, we are also calling upon all of us to support this initiative. This is an initiative that is being spearheaded by my brother from Cap Verde. So when we go next, next year to the UN Statistical Commission, I would want to call upon support from uh, the African National Statistics, uh, from the DGs from Africa. So a lot has been done. We've had side events even when there was the UN General Assembly meeting, again, to discuss on the issue of governance, peace, and security. And uh, what I can uh, mention here is that uh, Africa is in the forefront in the development of, of these statistics. And uh, the world is learning from us how we are computing these statistics. So this is something that we need to support and also to encourage the other countries that have not started this work to start the work so that all of us can start generation of uh, uh, these statistics. So what are the main achievements and the output? What uh, we could report from the group is that uh, 20 NSOs have officially confirmed interest in piloting the Sasha instrument for producing governance, peace, and security. So we have 20 countries, and nine of them have already started. And uh, we note that uh, UNDP is currently supporting five pilot countries, one in each of the regions that I have mentioned. We have the Cape Verde, Cote d'Ivoire, Malawi, Cameroon, and also Kenya. In addition to that, we note that uh, f apart from the five that have been supported by the UNDP, we have four self-starters, and this is commendable, where you have NSOs that are piloting the instrument in their own accord, using their own resources. So that is the Mari, Ghana, no, Mari, Uganda, Burundi, and also Tunisia. So what do we want to recommend to this committee? What we want to recommend as uh, the technical working group is that uh, we require support to support the, the pilot countries.
but we need to support at least five NSOs in each region. Then we also are saying that uh, in each they should also conduct the household survey. The, there is a survey module on uh, the household which complements the administrative data collection instrument. So we require that support. Then we are saying that again, the inception of uh, the GPSS, that is the government governance, peace, security, statistics unit, we need that to be formed in the participating NSOs and also in the RECs, we need the units that coordinate the production of governance, peace and security and also in uh, the African Union so that coordination, proper coordination is done. Again, we require that support is also provided in equipping, starting up and capacity building of these units so that they can generate or they can produce the requisite statistics. And this is across, that is in the national statistical offices, the concerned RECs, and also in the African Statistics uh, Division. And uh, we call upon stakeholders to secure funding for a regional project to support the NSOs for the institution institutionalization of the GPS data collection across uh, the continent. I want to thank you, uh, Chair, for that. Félicitations pour tous ces travaux-là qui prouvent bien l'engagement du groupe et la détermination d'avoir des statistiques officielles, solides et de qualité sur la gouvernance, la paix et la sécurité pour, pour mesurer un petit peu donc, euh, ces, ces, euh, ces domaines-là. Euh, je passe directement la, la parole. En... Est-ce que... Ayao, allez. Euh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voulais m'excuser, nous excuser au nom du, du secrétariat parce que il euh, y a certains groupes de travail. C'est vrai qu'ils ont produit des, des rapports, mais le secrétariat composé par l'Union africaine et la CEA n'a pas eu pu finir à temps les rapports et le soumettre au pays afin que les pays puissent se préparer pour présenter le rapport. Ce fut le cas du, du Rwanda qui n'a pas eu le temps. Et on n'a pas pu soumettre le rapport à temps pour, pour qu'il puisse se préparer. Et cela est le cas aussi de d'autres groupes de travail dont les noms figurent sur, sur le papier. Vous allez voir que les pays n'ont pas pu le, vraiment, eu le temps de se préparer afin de faire les présentations. Donc je voulais vraiment euh, nous excuser au nom du secrétariat, la CEA et l'Union africaine pour ce désagrément. Et nous pensons que pour les sessions futures, nous allons soumettre le rapport à temps au pays afin que le pays puisse être préparé pour pouvoir faire des présentations au nom de l'Afrique. Euh, sur ce, au, le groupe de travail, nous avons fait quelques activités en ce qui concerne les statistiques de commerce. Et je pense que cela n'a pas lieu de faire des, des, une présentation longue parce que nous avons parlé de ça dans les recommandations lors du suivi de, de, des recommandations du de, de dernier de la dernière session du comité des directeurs généraux. Nous avons réalisé certaines études dans le cadre du, du groupe de travail sur le commerce extérieur, notamment l'étude sur la production des statistiques de commerce des marchandises en Afrique, la mise en œuvre du, du, du système AMFTS 2010. Nous avons produit une étude sur la production des statistiques du commerce extérieur. Je suis en train de lire parce que je sais que vous avez le rapport devant vous. Et nous avons fait une étude sur la production du commerce extérieur informel en Afrique. Nous avons réalisé, une, euh, le groupe s'est réuni en mai 2014 à Addis Ababa pour discuter du commerce extérieur et les balances de paiement. Nous avons élaboré une, une méthodologie africaine du commerce, de, euh, du commerce des services et nous sommes en train de travailler sur la production de répertoires des entreprises en Afrique et d'un annuaire statistique. Afrique, du commerce en Afrique. Nous avons proposé quelques recommandations que nous soumettons à l'endroit des directeurs généraux de la statistique. Nous voulons demander à, 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 au comité de pouvoir mandater la commission de l'Union africaine, la CEIA, la BAD et la division des statistiques des Nations unies et les autres partenaires afin qu'ils puissent aider euh, à finaliser la méthodologie africaine sur le commerce extérieur des services. La méthodologie extérieure 
la méthodologie africaine sur le commerce extérieur informel, ainsi que l'élaboration d'une méthodologie africaine sur les indices du commerce extérieur, conformément aux recommandations du groupe de travail sur le commerce extérieur. Nous voulons demander aussi à la, à, à la session de, de demander à la Commission de l'Union africaine, la BAD, la CEIA et la Division statistique des Nations unies, les autres partenaires intéressés au projet, de pouvoir renforcer les capacités des, des États membres en mettant à leur disposition le logiciel Eurostest afin qu'ils qu puissent l'utiliser pour la production des statistiques sur le commerce extérieur. Comme recommandation encore, nous voulons demander que, eh, eh, que la base de données comme, tra, comme trace soit mise en... Eh, qu'on puisse développer une, une base de données africaine en nous basant sur comme, comme trace qui est développée par UNTAD. Eh, nous voulons aussi demander à la session de recommander à l'Union africaine, la BAD, la CEIA et la division statistique des Nations Unies de travailler sur l'harmonisation de la production de la, de la balance des paiements en Afrique parce que ce sujet, jusqu'à présent, n'est pas abordé, et, et abordé par le groupe de travail. Voici quelques cas de recommandations nous demandons à cette session. Je vous remercie. Alors. Merci à vous. Pour l'Algérie, est-ce que c'est fini donc Donc on ouvre le débat, ok. C'est fini, ok. Ok, donc euh, j'appelle donc euh, l'Afrique du Sud, le représentant de l'Afrique du Sud pour présenter euh, les résultats du groupe de travail spécialisé sur la comptabilité nationale et les statistiques sur les prix. South Africa is presenting chair. I'm, I'm trying to uh, work the English version of this. Thank you, good afternoon. I'm presenting the paper that was distributed, labeled as the statcom slash four slash four document. But for those who have not had the time to read it, I'll try to briefly share with you what the content of it is. The topic of the document is to describe the roadmap that we followed in terms of the SNA implementation in Africa. So we developed an African strategy for the implementation of the 2008 SNA. It was developed by the AGNA group under the umbrella of Statcom Africa. Our objective was quite clear, implement the 2008 SNA in all countries. And the aim of the project is to overcome the statistical weaknesses by bringing together all the African countries so we can implement SNA. Four major role players, AUC, ECA, the ADB, and then of course, all the African countries as represented by the AGNA group themselves. So where have we come from? This started a very long time ago, in the third quarter of 2010, at the fifth meeting of the committees of directors generals. There was a call to implement this project. Then early 2011, we completed an assessment of what the current situation is, what are the problem areas, limited resources, our capacity, the systems aren't talking to each other, we're not covering the economy completely and countries were in the early stages of implementation of the SNA. At the ninth group of uh, meeting of the AGNA group, we developed the first version of a project document that had key deliverables and outlines, timelines attached to them. Then a second version was discussed at the next meeting. This document was endorsed and adapted uh, and adopted by the AGNA group. And we've tasked the secretariat to finalize the document. That was done and then presented to the third meeting of Statcom Africa. Statcom Africa adopted the final version of the project document and all the African countries were tasked to work together to implement SNA 2008. And at the same time, the fifth AU ECA joint meeting also endorsed and adopted the very same document. 
fast forward about a year to early 2013 at a special session of the, of the AGNA group. We've taken the project document and we've uh, spread it out over a five-year project that can have a phased approach. We realized that it was just too big to start with everything at the same time. It will work better if we do it in three different phases. In addition to the phases, we identified 14 specific activities that can be handled independently. Then another year later, at the 11th AGNA meeting, uh, we finally launched the project. Our list of activities grew from 14 to 17, but we also included a governance structure, as well as a detailed calendar for the phase one activities, and how that will be uh, implemented. Now, what did we try to do with, with the phase one? In terms of improved capacities, we're expecting country plans and actions to be developed by each one of the, the members. We are looking at technical assistance as well as the institutional strengthening of all involved. In terms of the resource requirements, we have compiled documents in terms of uh, sources and methods, uh, guidelines, and different manuals that will assist the member countries, as well as embarked on an advocacy campaign for the SNA 2008. Once phase one is completed, we will be in a uh, in order to complete phase one, we need to organize the meetings, establish the secretariat, do further assessment of the progress of the different countries, of course monitor and evaluate it as it goes along and produce reports of our findings. The project is centered around what we call six pillars that keep the whole thing going. The first one, and possibly the most important, is the country plans and actions. No matter how much the three pan-African institutions assist with SNA implementation, in the end it's still the country that must do the work. So the pillar number one, in my view, is the most important. We need the country plans and actions to implement the SNA. Technical assistance is always important, and the main player there would be the African Development Bank. That includes strengthening the statistical institutions, as well as the IT tools that are required for the SNA implementation. But the three deals with institutional strengthening, and there we rely on AFRISTAT and the regional economic communities. Pillars four, development of the technical documents. There we rely on the ECA, and these documents will serve as the operational guidelines for the completion of national accounts. Advocacy, we've called in the help of the AUC, and that must be organized at a continental, regional, and at national levels. And then lastly, we have a pillar number six that brings everything together and that is the coordination, monitoring, evaluation, and reporting. So what lies ahead for us? Here towards the end of 2014, where we are today, we have the meeting of the Continental Steering Committee that took place on Monday and on Tuesday. The CSC is a body that was formed that sits at one hierarchy higher than the ACNA group. So the ACNA group uh, looks up to the CSC to provide us guidance and influence the way we do our work. So we've asked them to review and assess our project progress. We've asked the CSC to provide guidance in the implementation and to oversee the overall coordination of the project. One of the reports that we discussed at the CSC uh, deals with the actual country progress and implementation, and I've lifted a table uh, from that. And maybe the most worrying thing of that table is that we've only received feedback from 29 countries so it seems as if the national accountants are very hungry for data, but we are not playing the game when we have to give data to other people that ask us for it. And if we remember pillar number one that said we need the countries to develop their own implementation plans, it is concerning that only 29 countries had plans um, to, that they could share with us on how they wanted to implement the SNA. The other 25 odd countries um, have not responded to the questionnaire, so we're a bit in the dark as to what their plans are. We are planning to have in the first half of 2015, the next meeting of the African Group of National Accountants. Their agenda will be heavily influenced by the discussions we had at the CSC, but I'm sure we will be able to share with you some of the discussions of Monday and Tuesday uh, later during this three-day um, program. Lastly, points for discussion that we would have wanted feedback from uh, this audience is to express their views on the activities that we've undertaken, provide us guidance on how to strengthen the implementation, 
provide guidance on how we can report better, as well as express views on the resource mobilization for this first phase of the project. I thank you, Chair. Merci beaucoup pour cet exposé très important. Euh, les surprises des dernières minutes hein, sur le programme. Pour l'Algérie, c'est annulé. OK. OK, je vais euh, maintenant demander au représentant de la BAD pour présenter donc... Euh, OK, 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 à la suite. Le représentant de la BAD, s'il vous plaît. Oui. As the representative comes, Chair, I think we have pretended very much that we are managing to read the slides. Um, there are two lights because there is light there. So I think if the lights could be dimmed ah. uh, rather than pretend the whole morning and the afternoon that uh, we are reading some of the slides that we couldn't read. <laughs> so <laughs> can the technical support uh, deal with the lights, please? Okay. Be noted. Juste une information donc pour les invités, c'est que le groupe, le, le groupe de travail sur donc les infrastructures, l'industrie et le tourisme a été annulé. Voilà donc. Ok, allez, à vous la parole. Monsieur. Merci bien, Monsieur le Président. Ce sera vraiment une présentation très brève pour une raison très simple, c'est que Euh, ce groupe, euh, sur les, euh, le groupe technique sur les finances publiques, euh, le secteur privé de l'investissement, c'est l'un des 14 groupes de Sacha. Il y a eu beaucoup d'initiatives, mais le groupe ne s'est pas encore réuni en fait. Mais de par nos discussions, nous avons pris l'engagement de commencer les réunions en 2014, en 2015 plutôt. Et donc, pour, je ferai la présentation en, en trois diapositives, hein, puisque pour ne pas vous ennuyer. Et Donc, à titre d'introduction, disons qu'il y a eu beaucoup d'initiatives. En termes de finances publiques, euh, euh, secteur privé et d'investissement. Et pour, pour 2014, par exemple, nous avons organisé une première réunion en mars, dans le cadre de l'annuel statistique, où il y avait des groupes spécifiques sur les finances publiques et le secteur privé. Et dans le cadre aussi de, des travaux sur les statistiques des recettes publiques, nous avons eu une réunion à Addis Abeba le mois dernier, où nous voulons euh, élaborer euh, la première publication sur les recettes publiques en Afrique après celle après la publication que le SODE a eu, a eu avec euh, l'Amérique latine et puis l'Asie. Et donc, euh, dans ce cadre-là, il y a eu, il y a, on a discuté de, 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 de la nécessité que ce groupe-là sur les finances publiques, le secteur privé, euh, initie ses travaux. C'est vraiment important. Et, euh, et pourquoi Parce qu'il y a vraiment des défis à relever. En ce sens que euh, quand vous faites les statistiques des finances publiques, par exemple pour les pays africains, il y a beaucoup de pays qui calculent par exemple le sol budgétaire sur la base caisse, d'autres c'est sur base engagement. Et les méthodologies sont vraiment différentes et disparates. Et donc c'est nécessaire pour que le groupe de travail commence vraiment ses travaux. Et ensuite, pour les statistiques du secteur privé, Au niveau, au niveau régional, les statistiques que nous publions, M. le Président, en majeure partie, beaucoup viennent de doing business, tout ça, mais pas vraiment des pays. Donc, vraiment, il y a du travail à faire à ce, à ce niveau-là. Et, et donc, en termes de recommandations, euh, de par nos discussions, euh, nous avons dit qu'il faut que le groupe commence ses travaux en 2015. Et donc, les partenaires euh, vont organiser des réunions en février et, et, février ou mars. Et les pays seront, il y a des pays qui seront cooptés pour faire partie de ce groupe de travail-là, pour qu'on initie les travaux et les partenaires vont les accompagner. Quand je parle de partenaires, je parle de la BAD, de l'Union africaine, de la CEA, et puis dans le cas des finances publiques, il y a d'autres organisations qui s'occupent des taxes en Afrique, comme le CREDAF, la TAF, tout ça. Donc voilà un peu, sur le Président, c'est vraiment une brève présentation. Voilà ce que je peux dire sur ça. Merci. Merci beaucoup pour cet exposé bref et clair. Voilà, donc, euh, je passe la parole à la salle donc, pour euh, 
d'éventuel... Oui. Cap Vert. Euh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, bonsoir à tous. Euh, je tiens à remercier mon collègue du Kenya euh, pour l'excellente présentation très claire qui donne une idée de l'importance du projet chasse GPS et tout le travail accompli jusqu'à ce jour. Euh, je pense que GPS est l'un des groupes de chasse qui a avancé trop et très vite. Euh, le Cap Vert est un des pays pilotes dans la mise en œuvre de chasse GPS et nous avons eu le privilège avec de, les autres pays pilotes euh, de l'Union africaine et le PNUT de discuter et valider la méthodologie au Cap Vert. Nous effectuons, effectuons, effectuons également un forum important au Cap Vert pour discuter et valider les plans de tabulation commun pour les chasses GPS au niveau de notre continent afin de faciliter l'élaboration d'un rapport commun, commun au niveau de l'Union africaine. Et nous avons aussi collecté les informations au Cap Vert en utilisant des dispositifs mobiles, euh, les, les PDA concrètement, et on a lancé les résultats au Parlement avec la présence du président du Parlement capverdien et, et des députés, et de, les données à montrer une évaluation, évaluation négative des de députés dans notre pays. Ceci, nous allons terminer la collecte euh, au mois de, de novembre euh, sur les chasses GPS, c'est la deuxième édition du de, de projet, au mois de, de fin de sept mois. Pour terminer, j'encourage d'autres pays à joindre à cette initiative importante. Pour notre part, nous, nous sommes ouverts à continuer à collaborer euh, dans ces projets, dans les domaines de la coopération sud-sud. Je ne vais pas parler de City Group en gouvernance parce qu'il il n'est pas une activité de chasse GPS. Il sera objet d'une présentation le vendredi. Nous devons faire une distinction claire entre chasse GPS, que c'est une initiative africaine, et City Group en gouvernance, que c'est une un initiative globale. C'est important de faire cette, cette distinction et qu'on a le support des de INES du continent africain. Et on a aussi le support de beaucoup d'autres INES, d'autres continents et aussi d'organisations internationales. Donc, Citigroup, ce n'est pas une activité de chasse GPS. Merci. Merci beaucoup pour cette clarification-là. Oui. Ah, vous avez... S'il vous plaît, j'appelle les orateurs donc, pour venir ici. Merci beaucoup. Sur... Kenya et l'Afrique du Sud, s'il vous plaît. Oui. Vous venez ici. Donc, euh, par rapport au groupe technique euh, numéro 1, euh, en Afrique du Sud, nous avons euh, arrêté certaines choses, mais dans la mise en œuvre, euh, nous avons vu que ça n'a pas forcément marché. Parce que nous sommes dit, la collecte des informations par rapport à la gouvernance, paix et sécurité, c'est une collecte très délicate. Parce que c'est un questionnaire qu'il faut annexer à un questionnaire ménage qui est déjà très lourd. Donc les pays qui ont fait l'expérience doivent partager avec nous les difficultés envoyées dans nos boîtes. Un. Deux, comme nous voudrions avoir des informations solides, fiables, nous avons dit nous allons mettre en interface les indicateurs issus des données de collecte et les indicateurs issus de l'exploitation des sources de données administratives. Et pour l'exploitation des sources de données administratives, nous avons l'obligation de mettre en place un comité dans lequel il y aura les représentants de la justice, du ministère de l'Intérieur, surtout les brigades, les commissariats, pour être sûr d'avoir ces données. Non seulement avoir les données, parce que nous ne devons pas nous arrêter aux commentaires, il faut faire l'analyse. Et pour certaines analyses, nous avons besoin de ceux-là. Si des pays ont déjà réussi à mettre en place ce comité-là, qui est un comité délicat. Nous souhaiterions que ces expériences soient partagées avec nous. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup. Merci, M. le Président. Euh, je, je voudrais réagir à ce que vient de dire mon collègue. Euh, la Tunisie vient de, de réaliser l'enquête euh, « Gouvernance, paix et sécurité ». Nous avons détaché cette enquête aux autres enquêtes euh, auprès des ménages. C'était une enquête à part. Nous avons, avant d'entamer de, cette enquête, nous avons constitué un comité de pilotage où il y avait des, 
des re représentants du ministère de l'Intérieur, du ministère de la Justice et de la présidence du gouvernement, nous avons adopté le, le questionnaire au contexte tunisien et nous avons réalisé ce, cette enquête et ça a été euh, une réussite. Euh, nous sommes en train maintenant d'exploiter l'enquête et nous aurons dans quelques jours, euh, le, nous publierons dans quelques jours le résultat de cette enquête. Donc, euh, ça sera très bien et j'encourage tous les pays à euh, constituer un comité de pilotage où ces différents organismes euh, seront représentés pour pouvoir faciliter l'exécution de l'enquête sur le terrain. Merci. Merci beaucoup. L'Algérie. Oui, okay. euh, merci, M. le Président. Je, je voulais également euh, dire quelques mots sur le, le premier groupe technique, donc celui relatif à la gouvernance et pardon, paix et sécurité, et, et, et indiquer que c'était un thème qui, euh, qui dépassait le périmètre de compétences de l'INS ou de l'ONS et qu'il impliquait euh, d'autres membres du système statistique national à savoir un certain nombre de ministères qui ont été cités par mes collègues tels que la justice et, et l'intérieur donc euh, la, la, la mise en œuvre ou la conduite de, de telles enquêtes euh, peut s'avérer euh, quelque peu délicate et euh, à, à ce titre là je crois que euh, les expériences euh, dans les pays pilotes pourront servir euh, d'exemple de, de, pour les pays qui, qui souhaitent un jour euh, euh, aborder ce type d'enquête. Je, je voudrais également dire euh, un, un mot sur le, le, le groupe relatif au commerce extérieur et euh, je, je ne sais pas si euh, la, la recommandation de l'établissement d'exercices miroirs entre les pays africains pour juger justement de la pertinence des statistiques du commerce extérieur euh, euh, a, a, été, a été retenue. Euh, en Enfin, et, et ça c'est un problème de forme, euh, je, je, je note avec euh, un peu de surprise que l'Algérie était euh, prévue pour présenter le groupe technique spécialisé sur les infrastructures, l'industrie et le tourisme. Je pense qu'il s'agit d'une erreur, parce qu'il n'a jamais été question qu'il en soit ainsi. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ok, merci beaucoup. Madame, Madame, oui. Ok, j'arrive à la droite. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to commend my Kenyan colleague for the presentation on governance, peace, and security. And I just want to point out that Ghana was, is one of the first few countries to have piloted the Shasta tool on governance, peace, and security. And uh, that was done between 2012 and 2013, and the report is out. And so if you could uh, update your list of countries that have uh, completed this work. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, je voudrais, pour ma première intervention, remercier euh, l'organisation de ces travaux et surtout féliciter tous ceux qui ont jusqu'à présent apporté des contributions par rapport aux points qui ont pu être examinés. S'agissant de statistiques sur la gouvernance, paix et sécurité, je voulais juste euh, partager très rapidement euh, l'expérience du Cameroun par rapport à la recommandation qui a été faite en Afrique du Sud. Euh, effectivement, il y a euh, les deux dimensions. Euh, la dimension source administrative et puis la dimension euh, 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 source d'enquête, de manière à voir en quelque sorte euh, les statistiques sur l'offre des éléments qui concernent la gouvernance, paix et sécurité, et puis du côté des ménages, les besoins dont la demande dans ces domaines. Euh, euh, nous avons euh, déjà commencé à travailler avec euh, un groupe sur euh, les statistiques de sources administratives comprenant toutes les administrations et institutions qui ont été retenues et euh, un premier rapport euh, a été déjà produit et nous sommes en train de le finaliser euh, pour le rendre officiel. Euh, le deuxième rapport 
du côté euh, de, la, de la demande, donc SOS euh, enquête auprès de ménages euh, est en train d'être réalisée parce que nous avons lancé une enquête euh, auprès des ménages avec ce module sur les statistiques gouvernantes, paix et sécurité. La collecte des données s'achève au plus tard le 22 décembre de, de cette année, ce qui veut dire que euh, nous serons en mesure, euh, à partir du, du fin du premier trimestre 2015, euh, d'avoir euh, une expérience complète sur les deux dimensions de cette statistique. Maintenant, sur la mise en place de, de cadre de coordination, de le formaliser, euh, nous avons par expérience pensé qu'il fallait d'abord commencer par l'exercice et intéresser d'abord les institutions sur l'importance du travail, de manière à ce que ces administrations et institutions puissent déjà se rendre compte que c'est un travail extrêmement important, d'abord pour elles-mêmes et, et pour les autres. Et à partir de ce moment, il sera plus facile de proposer et d'adopter un cadre formel au cours duquel euh, les résultats collectés pourront être analysés et publiés et être considérés comme des statistiques vraiment officielles sur la gouvernance, paix et sécurité. Parce que le problème qui se pose, compte tenu de la délicatesse des questions, c'est rendre officielles ces statistiques. Effectivement, on a besoin d'avoir les responsables de la justice, euh, les juridictions, euh, les, ceux qui s'occupent des établissements pénitentiaires et de la police judiciaire, ainsi de suite, pour pouvoir être en mesure d'avancer, puisque les fichiers des données euh, sont dans la plupart des cas détenus par ces administrations et on a besoin d'accéder à la vie. Voilà l'expérience que je se dis concernant le Cameroun, mais c'est beaucoup plus en 2015 que nous pourrons dérouler cela et peut-être euh, proposer, n'est-ce pas, comment mettre en place un cadre de coordination au niveau euh, national. Maintenant, euh, je voulais euh, dire un mot sur euh, la comptabilité nationale. Euh, le Cameroun est membre de ce groupe, donc je voulais déjà aussi euh, féliciter les membres de ce groupe qui font, ont fait extrêmement de progrès dans l'appropriation du système et euh, surtout euh, insister pour que euh, tous les pays puissent passer à ce système parce que euh, nous avons besoin, selon notre euh, chassa, n'est-ce pas, d'avoir des, des, des sachets cohérentes et harmonisées et la comptabilité nationale euh, est l'un des meilleurs cadres qui permet de faire ce travail de cohérence. On ne peut le faire que si on a euh, déjà par ailleurs mis en place ce, ce nouveau système de comptabilité euh, nationale. Bon, nous, nous aurons peut-être l'occasion d'en parler sur les aspects du secteur informel, puisque aujourd'hui le secteur informel, en raison de sa contribution au PIB et de l'emploi, euh, devient un élément extrêmement important pour que euh, la, 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 la comptabilité nationale soit de plus en plus une source euh, pertinente pour apprécier l'évolution de la situation économique dans nos pays. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup. Euh, Afrique du Sud. Ok, j'arrive. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, two points to make. The, the first one, really to congratulate the AU in supporting and uh, helping us with the GPS and uh, our brother Cabo Bed. The issue of governance, peace, and security indicators actually served at the United Nations Statistics Commission in 2003. It was thrown out because statisticians feared that this is a difficult thing to do. The context has to be shown that uh, it has never been difficult, and Africa has actually put this back on the agenda where it belongs. And it is one of the key pillars of the post-2015 agenda of governance, peace, and security. And that context has to be elevated. And its origins are from the Africa peer review mechanisms, which many looked at and thought that it was a joke. But that has given birth to these particular indicators that now are very critical uh, for the post-2015 agenda. The second question is, uh, yes, Joe, you, 
There are 29 countries, uh, and uh, they are not doing. We are not doing that well. And uh, my brother Cameroon is uh, pointing out to the fact that we are not doing that well. I know that when we are running the ICP, we ran very well, and people would come and work together. I don't know whether it is not time to adopt that style. I mean, I know it costs a bit of money. ADB was running that. Perhaps it is time that uh, we get onto that path, uh, get this thing done and over and out, and get uh, the numbers right. Uh, thanks, Chair. Merci beaucoup. Oui. Uganda. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Uganda is one of the countries that uh, actually undertook a survey on GPS. But I would like to request the group to strategically think about the dissemination strategy for the findings. I'm, I'm just adding my voice to um, uh, what uh, my brother Pari is saying, because, for example, we are disseminating. One of the things that came out clearly uh, was that the worst performing group were the honorable members of parliament. Now, you know, these honorable members of parliament are the same people who approve your budget. So we must know, we must know that statistics, which is closer to politics, makes it even closer, actually gets mingled up with politics as we move into GPS. And uh, one of the things that we found out, for example, uh, in Uganda is that Whereas, whereas the honorable members of parliament were shown as if they were not good performers, the interpretation had a problem because the public expected these honorable members of parliament to give them handouts. And that's not what they're supposed to do. And therefore, to some extent, judging them as the worst performers had a problem. So I, I would like to request the group to really think about a systematic way of disseminating this information so that we don't clash with our political friends. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Une dernière intervention. La Côte d'Ivoire, Ali Ibrahima. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous sommes oui. contents de savoir que ce projet fait son petit bonhomme de chemin. Je dois rappeler que la Côte d'Ivoire avait déjà l'habitude de publier les données de gouvernance à partir des sources administratives et que, euh, comme membre de ce GPS, nous, allons, nous sommes en cours de réalisation de l'enquête auprès des ménages, une enquête euh, qui n'est couplée à aucune autre enquête parce que nous pensons que la question est importante. Quant à la mise en place d'un groupe spécial, nous avons euh, l'avantage en Côte d'Ivoire d'avoir déjà un dispositif institutionnel très fort. Nous avons une autorité, la gouvernance. Nous avons un secrétariat national, la gouvernance. Et ces deux structures ont accepté que l'INS puisse leur mettre à disposition les données nécessaires pour prendre les décisions opportunes. Donc sur la question, on n'a pas de problème. Tout à l'heure, nos collègues ont évoqué la question des statistiques financières, statistiques publiques et tout ça. Ils ont cité les partenaires, je n'ai pas entendu les fonds monétaires. Alors que nous savons que dans ce domaine-là, euh, Afitat nous, nous s'intéresse et, et, et nous aide énormément sur les avancées en matière de comptabilité nationale. Peut-être qu'il ne faut pas les oublier euh, quand vous allez réunir autour de la question ce qui peut nous aider à avancer. Voilà les quelques éléments que je voulais ajouter. Et dire que tout à l'heure, l'Union européenne avait fait des propositions, mais l'élément fondamental pour ces comptes-là aussi, c'est l'application ERETES. Nous savons aujourd'hui que le bailleur se désengage pour l'entretien de ce outil principal et important. Est-ce que, pour ceux qui vont négocier avec l'Union européenne de leur financement, il ne serait pas bon que, comme c'est un outil qui vient de chez eux, 
que eux mêmes avaient financé par un pays, membre de leur union, qu'ils assurent les frais de maintenance. Si ce n'est pas fait, je pense qu'on va avoir des difficultés parce que c'est un outil très important, mais qui a besoin d'évoluer avec l'évolution. Et s'il n'y a pas de sous pour entretenir, on va être encore euh, amené à recommencer encore certaines choses à zéro. Et comme euh, tu sais qu'en Afrique, on est très paresseux, il vaut mieux ne pas recommencer les choses qui marchent et aller sur d'autres chantiers nouveaux et innovateurs. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Peut-être avant de passer la parole... Euh, C'est qui Ok. Dernière intervention. Allez. Oui, monsieur. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the presentation on the special technical, specialized technical group on national accounts, it also should have included price statistics. My question is, is it, uh, what does it, what inference do we get is that uh, Africa is doing very well in the area of price statistics and there is no further development or it's just because people have forgotten about price statistics? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Merci beaucoup. Je sais, avant de passer la parole à mes collègues, je ne sais pas est-ce que nos amis d'Eurostat ont, euh, ont un commentaire sur ce qui a été avancé par Ibrahima sur euh, Orotes. Je peux dire quelque chose sur ça, que c'est dans le contexte de la sustainability de la sustainability des projets que il y a des investissements et des coûts de maintenance. Costs as I understood from the, from the question. Investments are uh, indeed, uh, many of them of a permanent character. So uh, when you start a project, when you start uh, developing tools, then you need to uh, manage from the beginning, of course, uh, the cost and benefit uh, estimations of such systems. Uh, so it's not gratuit and what the, European Union's support uh, means is uh, setting those kind of developments in motion. Uh, it's not uh, as we are in the European member states expecting that the member states take, of course, part of the costs themselves. I hope this was the answer on the question. Merci beaucoup. Je passe la parole, donc je laisse le soin à Ibrahima, donc de voir ça. Oh, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank everyone for the interventions that you've made. And uh, to acknowledge that uh, the GPS is both a global and an African initiative. And Africa has made a lot of progress in this area. And uh, we are showcasing to the world that this is possible, it's doable, we can generate uh, GPS statistics. And uh, what I think we need to acknowledge is that uh, the national statistical offices alone cannot do this. There is a lot of involvement that is required uh, with uh, the key stakeholders. You need to involve parliament, the judiciary system, the police, and all the other agencies that deal with uh, peace and uh, governance, peace and security. So we need also to learn from uh, one another. We need uh, to learn, share experiences. Kavad have done quite well. Kenya, we also have done well. Then Ghana, and I would want to urge the African Union Commission to update the list so that uh, we get these reports. Then we share the reports, we share experience. And even when we are disseminating some of these reports, when they were disseminating the household survey, did invite some of the African countries to get an experience about how do you disseminate this? Because even you have to agree on the instrument, for example, before you even undertake that. You get, you have a meeting, you call the stakeholders, you go through the questions. Some you might think that they are very sensitive, but eventually you get the answers. So it's a learning process. We need to share experiences. We need also to share uh, reports. And uh, I'm very sure that uh, it's something, it's doable, we've done it. And uh, if the pilot countries have done, the other countries also can do that, so, so that we share the requisite experience. So 
mine is to ask uh, the AU to ensure that uh, the reports are disseminated, they are shared, so that uh, we could share the experience on coming up with uh, the GPS uh, statistics. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. In response to South Africa, without uh, preempting the presentation from the Continental Steering Committee, the implementation of phase one uh, does cons is considering at the moment to identify 10 countries, two for each of the five regions, um, that one can uh, pilot the, uh, how, we want to, how we can support the SNA implementation. But it's still in, in uh, sort of the design phase of it, but we hope to tell you more about it when we get an opportunity to present. The question around national accounts and prices is quite interesting because the grouping of national accounts and prices as a theme stems from the grouping of them together when ICP was still uh, a major activity that we did. And when Shasha considered the different themes for the groups, it just felt natural to have national accounts and prices together. And at the moment, the emphasis of the project is the SNA implementation, but it doesn't say that uh, we have forgotten about prices. As recently as two weeks ago, there was still a meeting of uh, many of the price statisticians in Africa um, on how we can harmonize some of our consumer price indices and make sure we use common practices, but it's not a theme on its own. Merci beaucoup, donc, euh, pour cette longue séance. Peut-être avant de lever euh, cette séance-là, j'aimerais bien euh, revenir sur le comité technique qu'on a proposé donc, de le créer. Euh, quelques collègues donc, suggèrent euh, d'ajouter euh, l'Algérie et le Cameroun pour avoir une meilleure représentativité donc, euh, du continent. Je ne sais pas, est-ce que vous êtes d'accord ou non OK. Pour l'Algérie et le Cameroun. Pour avoir une représentativité donc, euh, au niveau du continent. Alors, donc, merci beaucoup et à demain, Inch'Allah, à 8h30. Oui. Uh, Annoncement. Il y a un événement média à tout à l'heure, après la pause café. Euh, une autre annonce, s'il vous plaît. Euh, nous avons un, une réunion qui devait être organisée demain et qui est reportée pour euh, demain matin. C'est la, la session sur l'appui de la Suède dans le domaine du développement statistique en Afrique. La Suède vous invite à venir... Euh, de, entre 8, de 8h à 8h30 pour pouvoir euh, donc suivre euh, 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 disons un exposé sur leurs appuis et ils voulaient particulièrement insister sur la présence de la Tanzanie, de la Zambie, de l'Éthiopie, du Togo, de la SADEC, de East African Community et tous les autres pays. Venez, ils vous invitent à venir savoir ce qu'ils donnent comme appui. Merci. Demain de 8h à 8h30.